Since 2004, for almost 20 years, we've been hunting hundreds of different monsters in the Monster Hunter series. And unlike the flagship Rathalos that has been returning in every single game ever since, there have been a few select monsters that only appeared once in a single game, after which they disappeared forever. There are five specific monsters which originated during the last 15 years. Five monsters that are so massive in size to make something as big as a Rathalos in a direct comparison look like a tiny piece of dung. And with Monster Hunter 6 coming out most likely next year, I am confident Monster Hunter 6 will introduce another massive Elder Dragon. And by massive, I mean something between the size of Olao Shanlung and Zora Magdaros. And the reason why I'm so sure about that is that ever since 2004, every main title in each of the five generations of Monster Hunter games has introduced at least one new massive monster. Occasionally, some of these massive monsters even returned. We've seen the return of Lao Shanlong 13 years after its original appearance. But not only that, Darren Moran from 4 Ultimate revealed himself a few years after Jen Moran's first appearance in Generation 3. And based on what we've seen in these five generations, when looking ahead at Monster Hunter 6, that's why I'm confident it will happen again we will see another new massive Elder Dragon and on top of that, maybe even an old returning Elder from the previous five generations. And because of that, I wanted to make this video. Today, I'm here to tell you guys one thing. I know the five massive Elder Dragons that will not return. But before we dive into this, yesterday I played Clash Royale for more than six hours straight. This game gets really addicting and it passed my test. So I decided to partner with them to sponsor this video. Clash Royale is a real-time multiplayer game where you build a deck of eight different cards of your choice. You then deploy your cards strategically on the field to outplay your opponents and to destroy their towers. This is my current deck and my personal strategy to win is to find a good opening to deploy my giant. It's a rare card I was able to upgrade to level 6, uh, actually it's already level 7, and then combine it with ranged forces like my low cost spear goblins to protect it from damage. The fights are pretty intense because you always match with opponents at a similar ranking and I really like the progression because with more medals you collect from winning you will unlock new stages which will reward new cards. This makes for quite an addicting gameplay loop, ideal to play on the go. You can download the game for free at the link in the description down below. Huge thanks to Clash Royale for sponsoring this video. Siedius, the final boss from Monster Hunter Tri is a massive whale-like creature which resides in the underwater canyons and ruins deep below Moga village. It is fought exclusively underwater and sadly the chances of an implementation of underwater combat in the future is very unlikely due to the insane developing effort it comes with. Part of the reason why Underwater was discontinued in 4th gen was that supporting a second moveset for all of the 14 weapon types for Underwater would almost double the amount of effort for each weapon type, as if the game had 28 instead of 14 different weapons. But not only that, the same applies to all of the monsters which can be fought on both land and in the water. Underwater requires vastly different animations and Capcom has commented on that matter in the past and it absolutely makes sense from a developing standpoint why they haven't brought Underwater back. Especially after it received so much mixed feedback from the community. Even in general, there aren't that many other video games, aside from Monster Hunter, which have boss monsters similar to Monster Hunter, which can be fought both underwater and on land. At least I personally can't think of any. If you guys know some games like Horizon, Wild Hearts, Soulsborne games or Dauntless which have monsters that can be fought both on land as well as underwater, definitely let me know in the comments below. That might be interesting for a future video. So underwater is a very ambitious feature to have for a game studio. Well, without underwater in future Monster Hunter games, there would be no Sea Adias. And even if underwater returns at some point in the future, I would love to see that, could Ciadias return? It would still be more than unlikely. At the end of the day, this monster was a great experience for many of us who play Try, and I can remember when I was 15 years old and I faced Ciadias for the first time, I brought a para longsword trying to paralyze, and I just figured out by failing that uh, Ciadias could not be paralyzed, and uh, I learned my lesson and brought a fire weapon afterwards. 
With a length of 58 meters, Ciedias is already incredibly large, but appears small compared to the most massive Elder Dragon from 4 Ultimate. Dalamador is the longest monster of the mainline series to date, with an insane length of 440 meters. As much as I love the design and overall concept of Dalamador, there is no way I can see him return in future games. A few years after Dalamador's first appearance in 4 Ultimate, we were able to see parts of its skeleton in the Rotten Vale, a huge area from Monster Hunter World covered in rotting bones of elders and other monsters that have come there to die. While this is an incredibly interesting connection between World and 4 Ultimate and would certainly be a fantastic hint of Dalamador returning, we haven't seen him return since. And when looking at this fight from a logical perspective, this was created for verticality. Verticality was the theme of the fourth generation of Monster Hunter games compared to the more flat design of the previous generations. For the first time, the new weapon Insect Glaive introduced aerial combat and many of the four U maps featured ledges and slopes, improved mobility and climbing animations, as well as jumping attacks all tied into the new mechanic mounting. And so, Dolomador's fight takes place in a very vertically designed area called the Spear Tip Crag. Dolomador moves along this steep mountain during the fight, and hunters can climb onto several rocks as well as Dolomador itself. This fight was completely designed around verticality. With Monster Hunter Rise's Wirebug feature, that would have been the only plausible chance I could see Dolomador return, but we all know that didn't happen. And on top of that, when considering the development of such a complex fight, it seems rather challenging and I would rather see a completely different design of a massive snake-like Elder Dragon introduced at some point in the future. Monster Hunter Tri was my personal favorite game and one of its coolest but also weirdest fights was Gen Moran. This massive Elder Dragon resides in the Great Desert and despite being 111 meters in length, it is able to swim on sand. This led to a really unique siege experience where hunters attacked from the dragon ship as well as climbed on its back to attack its rocky spine and to harvest valuable minerals. In the last phase then the fight took place on the ground and when Jen toppled, hunters could even go into its mouth to attack its carries. Despite being such a unique fight, a few years later we found ourselves fighting a monster very closely related to Jen Moran called Darren Moran. That was the first time in the series we saw such a massive Elder Dragon return in a form of what would many consider a reskin. In terms of gameplay, the fight was very similar to Gen Moran. Cannons, Ballista and a Dragonator could be used on the Dragon ship. Hunters could climb onto its back as well as fight it from the ground in the last phase. And if anything, this shows that the introduction of a new massive Elder Dragon, which is so similar to an already existing one, means that the fight against it is also almost identical. And while that works really well for Darren Moran and for Ultimate on the 3DS, after Gen Moran could already be fought on the 3DS in Tri Ultimate, I just can't see this monster and its unique siege fight return on a new hardware in future Monster Hunter games. The monster was awesome and I would love to see it return, but after the copy-paste reskin Darren Moran, I simply can't see such a unique siege concept fitting into the style of upcoming games anymore. At the end of the story of Monster Hunter Generations Ultimate, hunters faced Atal Ka, a final boss resembling a golden mantis, basically an insect which doesn't look too menacing at first glance, certainly not compared to some of the other final bosses. But then, all of a sudden, the fight changes and it's not so underwhelming anymore as it pulls a huge war machine out of the sand. The sky goes crazy as a sandstorm comes out of nowhere and Atalka takes control of this massive walking fortress consisting of scrap metal. This monster is basically used as Captain Kid from One Piece. After breaking its toes, hunters can climb onto it and damage its cocoon. Once enough damage has been dealt, the fortress collapses and the fight transitions again. It then uses its golden silk to wildly swing huge objects around it and towards the hunters. Or it attaches them onto its body directly. Capcom definitely wanted to try something completely new for this final boss to wrap up the four classic generations before World came out. And this led to a really unique experience. 
but at the same time, this fight has to be one of the weirdest Monster Hunter fights to date. And unlike many other monsters from the generation's games, like Glavinus, Astalos, Mizutsune, and Valstrax, who all returned, it's pretty safe to say that we won't see Atalka anymore in the future. And so the fifth massive Elder Dragon, which I don't think will ever return, is Dire Morales. This final boss of Triultimate shares many similarities with Fatalis, one of them being a black dragon. And Fatalis is clearly what the developers had in mind when creating Dire Morales. Except this Elder Dragon is semi-aquatic and can be fought underwater as well. Morales is encountered on the beach of the Tainted Sea an area which supports both underwater as well as combat on land. At the beginning of the quest, Morales shoots magma balls out of its wings from afar, as only its head sticks out of the water. So this is where the fight begins with underwater combat. And it feels very much like this is what Capcom wanted. They wanted another Fatalis-like experience while combining it with what made the third generation stand out. It's underwater. And that ties into its main gameplay mechanic. The lava flowing within Morales' body parts highlight its weak points. Each of these body parts have to be damaged, and while that can be difficult to do with such a large monster on land, this can be achieved quite well underwater, as you're able to reach almost all of its body parts by simply swimming there. And while the idea works really well to put an emphasis on underwater combat for the game's final boss, the fact that Morales is so massive and doesn't have a hydrodynamic shape like Lygicrus or Plesioth, it makes it extremely slow underwater. Its movement speed is in no way comparable to Fatalis, and so many good players used to just cheese its health away with heavy bowguns underwater until it died before it could even leave the water. And beyond that, with how unlikely a comeback of underwater support is in the future, as unlikely is the return of Morales. Without water, the fight is basically a slowed down Magma Fatalis. But even though many of these massive monsters will never return, I am very confident MH6 will have at least one new massive monster in store for us. Monster Hunter Rise's biggest monsters were Narva, Ibushi and Narva the Allmother, and I wouldn't exactly call them massive, definitely not compared to some of the other monsters featured in this video, or something as big as Zora, that is completely on a different level. Instead, Rise introduced Rampage quests, and the fact that Rampage quests didn't even carry over into Sunbreak shows us how good the odds will be for Capcom allocating more of their manpower towards experiences that we've had in the past in every other Monster Hunter game before. Huge siege fights. I myself am super excited to see what the next game will have in store for us, and if you haven't experienced any of these five featured monsters in this video, I hope you will be able to get your hands on some of the older Monster Hunter games as well. This year is the perfect time to experience classic Monster Hunter as we wait for MH6. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.